Welcome to Prism Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 64 of SQL Server video series. In this video, we'll discuss about replacing cursors using joins. In part 63, we have discussed about cursors. The example in part 63 took around 43 seconds on my machine to complete. If you haven't watched part 63, I would strongly encourage you to do so before proceeding with this session. In this video, we'll discuss about rewriting the same example using a join. So if you remember, in part 63, we updated the unit price in TBL product sales table to 55 when the product name is product 55. If the product name is product-65, then we updated the unit price to 65. On the other hand, if the product name starts with product-100, we changed or we updated the unit price to 1000. Let's see how to achieve the same thing using joins and see how fast that query will be. So what do we want to do? We want to update TBL product sales table. Within that, we want to update unit price. So set unit price is equal to, I'm going to use the case statement, but we'll come to that in just a bit. First, let's specify the tables. So in the from class, we specify product sales table. So I want to update TBL product sales. And I'm saying from TBL product sales. And to find out the name, the name is not present in TBL product sales table. It's present in TBL products table. So I have to join with TBL products table and specify the join condition. What is the common column between the two tables? In TBL products, the column is ID and within TBL product sales, it's product ID. So that's the common column between these two tables based on which we are joining them. And look at this, so what do I want to do? I want to update the unit price to, so I'm going to use a case statement here. So case, fan, name of the product is equal to, okay, let's copy it from the uh, cursors, you know, query. So if the name is product 55, then what we want to do, then we want to update the unit price to 55. Along the same lines, if the product name is 65, then we want to update the unit price to 65. And along the same lines, when name like if it starts with product dash 100 then we want to set the unit price to 1000 okay so that's our condition and then we basically want to end the case statement okay so it's a very simple case statement we have discussed about case statements in the previous session of this video series if you haven't watched that i would strongly encourage you to do so okay so we have that there and in the where clause we can specify what products we want to update since we now have access to the name column as we are using a join we can also filter the rows we don't want to retrieve all the 600,000 rows from TBL product sales table we can filter them using the where clause so I'm going to specify where name is equal to you know product-55 or you know, let me copy that or where name, you know, name is equal to product 65 or finally name like product dash 100. Okay, so whatever rows matches these criteria, retrieve them and update their unit price to, you know, 55 if the product name is product dash 55 or 65, you know, depending on these conditions. So let's go ahead and run this query and see how long is that going to take. Now remember, in the previous session, it took around 43 seconds to update, you know, to, to process the rows on a row by row basis using cursors. Let me execute this now. Look at this executing query. It took around two seconds and how many rows are updated? 1694 rows are updated. Now to check our results, we can make use of the same query that used in the previous session. So when I execute this query, we should get all the rows and look at that, whatever has 100, you know, name, pattern, product dash 100, and then anything after that, the unit price is updated to 1000. Let's check it for product 55 and 65. Press F5, look at that, product 55, all of them are updated to 55, and 65s are updated to 65. 
okay so the update query worked as expected and look at this the amount of performance varies 2 seconds and varies 43 seconds there is a drastic improve in performance and that is because we are using joints that's one thing joints work much better because they operate on rows on a set basis okay whatever rows meet this criteria they are updated you know in in sets rather than processing the rows uh, you know individually on a row by row basis and another thing is since we are using the where clause we are not retrieving 600,000 rows from TBL product sales instead whatever rows matches whatever are the common rows between these two tables and then we also have a where clause so it reduces the rows to 1694 that's why this query is very fast okay we can even remove this where clause so if you if we remove this where clause then what's gonna happen we get 600,000 records okay but still since we are using a join it's going to be very fast you know so but then if I you know if I remove this where clause then what's gonna happen we get 600,000 matching rows so if we get 600,000 matching rows look at this you're saying set na uh, unit price to 55 and name matches to product 55 otherwise 65 otherwise 1000 if the row if the name of the product doesn't match to any of these rows okay then the unit price will be updated to null and we want to avoid that because since we don't use this we get other you know if we are not using this where clause we get the other rows as well and if the name is not matching any of these three things then we don't want the unit price to be updated to null that's why what you do is have an else class if the name doesn't match any of these three then what I want I want back the unit price you know just update with whatever unit price that's already there okay but usually we don't do this because we already have access to the name column as we are joining these two tables you know you can simply filter the rows but even if we don't filter even if we are processing all the 600,000 rows and I'm doing that using a join let us see how long is this query going to take okay now when we execute this update query it's going to update 600,000 records because in TBL product sales we have 600,000 records and there is a matching row for every row in TBL product sales uh, you know a matching row is present in TBL products that's why this is going to update 600,000 rows now let me go ahead and run this look at this executing query now it's definitely more going to be more than two seconds remember the previous query using cursors took 43 seconds but look at this query completed successfully and how long it took six seconds and how many rows has this affected 600,000 rows okay though it's processing 600,000 rows you know we still have uh, you know we still have the data processed in six seconds but whereas when we do it with cursors using a row by row you know when we are processing rows uh, on a row by row basis it took around 43 seconds okay now let's quickly check if the data has been updated as we uh, expect okay so first I want to see for product 55 and product 65 so that's the same 55 and 65 and let's check for the other things where you know name pattern is product dash 100 so that's 1000 and let's check anything that doesn't match uh, these things uh, because we don't want that to be updated to null so let me select top 10 star look at this uh, for the other products the unit prices are the same they were not updated to null now whenever you don't have the where clause make sure you have this else part otherwise what's going to happen uh, if that condition is not matching look at look at what's gonna happen if I execute this update query you know some of the rows will not match these conditions for all those rows the unit price will become null because none of these conditions are met so a null will be returned and unit price will be updated to null you know all these rows will work as expected for 55 you know they will be let's you know for any product with product dash 100 that's okay and for product 55 and product that 65 also it will be fine the data will be fine but check um, you know top 10 maybe from a product sales table check the unit price it will be now and we don't want that to be happening that's why whenever you use a case statement and if you are expecting rows that may not meet this criteria and if you want the data to be updated uh, you know correctly make sure you have your um, else part as well within the case statement so when I execute this query obviously you have seen that there is a drastic improvement in performance 
okay so this can you know you can imagine the amount of impact that cursor is having on performance cursor should always be used as a last option if you don't have any other way of achieving what you want to achieve only then make use of cursors or if it's a throwaway script you just want to run it one time and if and if performance is really not a concern maybe we can make use of cursors but real time production code you know we know how bad uh, cursors are for performance though so they should be avoided as much as we can on this slide you can find resources for asp.net c sharp and sql server interview questions that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day.